Did you know that the James Webb Telescope proved Stephen Hawking's theory? You may have heard about dark matter somewhere. This topic fascinated and frustrated scientists at the same time because of the mystery that surrounds it. A lot of things are unknown about these mysterious objects, yet they affect the very core of our universe's fabric. With the help of the discovery of James Webb Space Telescope, our understanding of dark matter has increased. JWST discovered dark matter and it fills a major portion of our universe. 5% of the visible universe includes the Earth, Sun, stars and galaxy clusters, and the rest is made up of this mysterious material known as dark matter. Stay till the end to find out the expected launching date of the new Nancy Grace Roman Telescope. Dark matter does not emit light or energy and thus remains invisible. It cannot be detected by regular sensors and detectors. Baryonic matter, which consists of baryons, makes dark matter visible. This is an umbrella name for subatomic particles like protons, neutrons and electrons. However, scientists believe that dark matter is made of non-baryonic matter such as WIMPs or some other weakly interacting massive particles. WIMPs are supposed to weigh 10 to 100 times the mass of a proton, but they are difficult to detect due to their weak interactions with normal neutralinos. Massive hypothetical particles that are heavier and slower than neutrinos are the leading candidate, though nobody has seen them yet. Sterile is another candidate for the composition of dark matter. The Sun constantly releases a stream of neutrinos that rarely interact with ordinary matter. They pass through Earth and its inhabitants. So how do we end up with the concept of dark matter? According to the assumptions in the past, some things in the universe are invisible to us because they emit no light. It goes back to the days when Newton discovered the so-called dark nebulae, which are clouds of interstellar dust blocking. In the 18th century, some theories about the objects which might swallow light later became known as black holes. Fast forward to the 20th century, astronomers accept the presence of a so-called dark universe. In the 1930s, an astronomer named Fritz Zwicky made the first observations of dark matter. His 1933 observation of the coma cluster of galaxies specifies a mass 500 times more than that previously calculated by the great astronomer Edwin Hubble. Astronomers and scientists still do not know what dark matter is made of. They are still finding a way to directly detect it. They are currently developing methods with experiments at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, which is the European Association for Nuclear Research. This is where the James Webb Space Telescope came in handy. By studying the effect of dark matter, or ordinary visible matter, the JWST is taking the indirect detection route. There are many strong theories on where dark matter comes from, as few scientists theorise that dark matter may be concentrated in black holes. The extreme gravitational pull of these powerful gates devours everything in their vicinity. This represents that dark matter would have been made in the Big Bang with all constituting elements of the universe. So, in terms of cosmic, these particles could be a thermal relic forged in the hot early universe and then during the transitions left behind to more moderate later eras. Freeze-out is one of those transactions that have changed the nature of the whole universe. At that time, the universe was so hot the particles produced by photons were smashed into other photons. Photons were hitting electrons and electrons were hitting positrons while producing these very heavy particles. The whole cosmos was a particle smashing party and it lasted only a trillionth of a second. What followed was the cosmic freeze-out. During the freeze-out, the universe expanded and cooled for particles to collide less frequently and tragically. Do you know about the implication of the speeds of dark matter particles? According to a scientist, dark matter particles can travel beyond a certain time limit if it is lighter and faster. Instead, slower and colder forms of dark matter have helped to build the structure most of these particles have been created by collisions of other particles in the hot, dense sub of the infant universe. In the modern era, there is a similar process in which high-energy particle collisions take place in a large hadron collider. This gives rise to exotic new types of particles. Dark matter particles would be looped up being hot, warm or cold as the universe gets expanded and cooled. There are different types of dark matter and each type impacts the growth of structure along the way, increasing the clumsiness of the universe. Thus cold dark matter would be a clump builder to the building of galaxies. It slowly forms clusters together that catch nearby pieces of the matter to create gravitational wells. However, hot dark matter would have been a clump smoother. Hot dark matter would have raised so fast to overcome the attractive forces of those gravitational wells. If all dark matter were hot, none of those seeds could have grown bigger structures like we have today. 
which is why scientists consider that hot dark matter particles, like relic neutrinos from the early days of the cosmos, could not be more than a sliver of dark matter as a whole. Dark matter is invisible, so how are scientists able to study it? Based on the discipline of the researchers for astronomers, there are two methods that involve looking at the clustering of material and the motion of objects in the universe. Alternatively, particle physicists try to identify the fundamental particles constituting dark matter. An experiment by the International Space Station called the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer AMS, detects antimatter in cosmic rays. It has recorded more than 100 billion hits by cosmic rays since 2011 and has presented fascinating insights into the composition of particles moving through the universe. Samuel Ting is the AMS lead scientist and a Nobel laureate with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He said they had measured excess of antimatter positrons to an electron and this excess can come from dark matter. Moreover, he added that they are still not sure whether it is from dark matter or some unknown astrophysics sources. In a few more years, they might make that determination apart from the AMS. Several telescopes are hunting for the effects of the dark matter in the Earth's orbit. European Space Agency's Planck spacecraft, which was retired, is one of them. It has spent four years in Lagrangian Point 2, where the JWST is located, mapping the distribution of the cosmic microwave background, a relic from the Big Bang in the universe. Irregularities in the distribution of this microwave background reveal clues about the distribution of dark matter. However, dark matter is not only being studied in space. On Earth, under a mountain in Italy, after WIMPs collide with xenon atoms, the LNG Xenon-1T is searching for telltale signs of interactions. This project gives scientists a chance to detect dark matter with ultra-low background massive detectors on Earth. The Large Underground Xenon Experiment LUX, is another dark matter project that is located in a gold mine in South Dakota. The US has also been hunting for signs of WIMP and Xenon interactions. What makes the JWST capable when you observe dark matter? Modern technology is better than the technology astronomers used back in the day. They can use current technologies to measure the mass in stars and galaxies as a roundabout method of detecting dark matter. It is the primary evidence for the existence of dark matter. Without a large amount of invisible mass, several galaxies could not exist and move as they do. The JWST will take sharp images to help astronomers locate that dark matter more precisely. So the researchers will easily detect disturbances caused by gravitational lensing and help them point out where the invisible mass is hiding. Gravitational lensing is a phenomenon defined by Einstein's general theory of relativity that says when a light beam passes a large mass, it will be a little deflected as the fabric of space-time is slightly curved by the mass. The JWST can spot these masses and determine the non-observable particles by imaging distant galaxies. These missing particles will probably be dark matter. The new space telescope is particularly well suited. Professor Matthew Walker of Carnegie Mellon University is the one researcher that can't wait to use the JWST. He is the principal investigator of a program that will use collected data in the telescope's first year of operation. He is going to work on dark matter with a twist on cold dark matter theory, which foresees that dark matter exists in clumps called halos with small basic units as opposed to galaxy-sized agglomerations. Walker and his team will search for disruption from subgalactic dark matter halos on very weak gravitational systems. One important thing about JWST is that it is enhanced as an infrared telescope for looking deep into the past and outer reaches of the cosmos. It has a narrow field of view instrument for looking at single objects very closely. It is exactly what you need for imaging the first stars in the universe and studying the atmosphere of the distant. Telescopes are enhanced to observe a large fraction of the sky for the study of dark matter. The possible way to learn and measure it is by adding up the outcomes received over a lot of space or volumes. However, the upcoming Nancy Grace Roman telescope is likely to launch in 2027 and it will provide a wide field of view. This telescope will also be capable of imaging wide swathes of the sky. It is exactly what you need to measure the effect of mysterious forces on large structures of the universe. However, the JWST and Nancy Grace Roman could work together once Roman is deployed. Nancy Grace Roman might classify hundreds of distant supernovae, but it will be JWST's job to make the most precise measurement of these distant lampposts. Considering all the features of Nancy Grace Roman Telescope, do tell us your views about the launching of this new telescope. 
If you liked our content, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and press the notification bell so you won't miss any of our future updates. Thank you for watching.